see I've already removed the floor. Uh, we've denailed the floor. Now it's a matter of finding out how much on level it is. I brought in a laser level for this. I'll show you how to use that. And it will also show you how to use the string method. To use the laser, make sure it gets plumb. There should be a bubble or some sort of leveling device on it, but mine's automatic leveling. It just sits and floats on alcohol and uh, until it finds itself level. So now we get a tape measure. Yeah, let's get a tape measure reference from there to there. Twenty-five and three quarter. Twenty-eight and three quarter. That's three inches. When selecting the board to marry onto the side of the joist, make sure you uh, get something that's still going to have at least two inches of meat on the bottom of it. We were lifting this three inches, so this is a two by six. We'll still have a good two and a half, three inches of meat on the bottom to get a good bite. This time I actually have kids playing in the background. So that's what we're hearing. So to do a string line, you need to take a screw or a nail and put it on the side of the board so the string comes along the top and runs down the side making your string uh, perfectly level all the way across. You want to do this on both sides of the string. What you do is you take your string, you tie a knot on that, tie your knot over there, pull it tight, wrap it around the um, screw or nail, go here and you wrap around here one, two, three, four times. Then you can pull this and this, pull that tight. You can see these rope here. Pull it around like this. It's not even a knot. And I like to take it and wrap around this time a couple of times. Now you have a nice tight string. Should sound like a guitar. So I got a few more of these to put up. We're going to put the joist, the assisto joist in here. And we'll raise it up just so it touches the string. You don't want to come up and push this up. And you don't want this to be shy, to shy of the string. Otherwise, your floor joists will be like this. Leona, don't mess up the string. Why? Because if you mess up the string, my floors won't be straight. <coughs> Tighten the string back up. So this side here, where we're not putting the string line, is just about perfectly level so anything that's just about or close for an old house is pretty good because uh, as you all know old houses are typically crooked so what I do is I'll just take a, a, a screw to hold it in place we'll lift this up flush with this side of the joist that way you can teeter on, teeter on the screw and we'll go over here and lift it up to the uh, string line. Daddy. You turn it off, you're gonna make me go blind. Quit messing with my laser, honey. Okay. Okay, so we'll lift this two by up so it just touches the string. See how the string started to move up? We'll back it down, back up to where it just touches the string, and we'll run the screw. important to note that the screws here are just a temporary support for your floor joists. What we're going to be putting in are these 5 16th, 3 and a half inch lag screws. Um, they'll hold a lot better. I like to put one about every 4 feet and stagger them so they're not all in the same grain line. Otherwise, your work gets split out. <clears throat> hold on. Alright, so put this on here. Okay, don't pull the trigger. This is the trigger. Don't turn it on. So we're going to take this and we're going to push this into the screw as we're pulling this trigger. And then when this goes all the way to that board, we'll turn it off, okay? You ready? Yeah. Okay, you can pull the trigger now. Go. <laughs> all the way.
Good job. What do you think of that? All I have to do right now is, uh, the only thing I have left to do right now is put these bolts in. Okay. Now watch out, I gotta put one right where your booty is. <laughs> yeah, right where your booty is. So you may have realized when we do this, we're installing our joists something like this. So that'll give the tendency when pressure goes up here, it's going to want to twist the board like so. So to stop this from twisting, we need to install blocking. So what you do is you get your type of a 2x6, or this one's a 2x8, just because it's scrap uh, It's off. It's on, Leo. No, I can see the back. Yeah, the back screen shuts off after a little bit. So you get a piece of a block like this, and it goes up against here, and then it ties into the other Shower side. Shower battery. So you get a piece of blocking like this, and it goes up here, and then the, over to the other side right here. So we need to cut it to fit that perfectly. Leona? <laughs> you showing them what you had for lunch? Fruit? Yes, and that will keep this from wanting to move because you'll be tying your entire floor together. Mm -hmm. Leona, they don't need to see your grilled cheese. So we want your blocking to be tight. If you got, put it in here, the exact measurement, if you need to smack it in a little bit with a hammer, that's actually a good thing. So let's get that marked up. Okay, well, I can't use a pencil, so I'm uh, using a screw to uh, do my marking. It's normal. You can use a knife. They actually work much better than a pencil. So mark, mark your measurement. Use a speed square. And you're going to have a nice square block. Make sure you... Yeah. Like cookie fans. <laughs> That's a cookie fan. You're crazy. Here, step back a little bit. I'm going to try to get this recorded, okay? Okay. You need nice square blocking. You don't want crooked floor joists. Okay. Can you tilt that down, Leona, really? because looking at my saw. There you go. So take the saw and have it so it comes up against the uh, speed square. Don't put your fingers underneath to where the saw is going to catch. That would be ridiculous. Okay? So hold that tight and you have nice square blocking with the circular. <laughs> You could also use um, a miter box. That works fine, but when we're out here in the middle of the floor, I prefer to use the circular saw, which just seems to be easier, unless we set up a piece of plywood, which at the time I couldn't, but I could now because I have all my joists fixed. Hey, Leona, you hand me that hammer. Right there by your foot. By your foot.
just broke in. What a nice square fit. As you can see this is not square, it's not tight. So I'm going to leave this piece of blocking loose. Then we'll put in this piece of blocking over here. And it should pick this up and make this square with the blocking with the blocking over here. So we'll cut another piece of blocking for here. Push this joist up going from this to this and tie it into this blocking. So we can run screws in there and hold it up. Okay, I got my second piece of blocking in here and when you pound it over the hammer, it pulled this piece tight. And you're gonna see it's a chain reaction. This one's a little loose over here. So when we get this blocking in over here, it'll pull that one tight all the way till we get to the foundation wall and then they should all be upright the way that they should be. So this is gonna keep our joists from going back and forth and um, basically movement in the floor. Any movement in the floor is bad, so. Okay, there's all the blocking lined up on the front wall. Gotta come over here, do the same thing on the back wall. Over here and blocking over there. And then I'm gonna finish this cross blocking here in the center. So we don't have bouncy floors. Okay guys, that's it. Um, that's how you level your floor, get it ready for subfloor. I gotta hurry up and uh, get this completely finished so I can get back to work making signs and then have enough time really late this evening to edit this video for you guys. All right, thanks, this is Jay with Footsteps from the Past. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, next week, I'll be showing you the video of how to install this door back here. I gotta replace it, reframe it from an old uh, farmhouse frame and plus really raise the floor over there probably an inch. So again, I'm Jay, Footsteps in the Past. This is my old house. Thanks for stopping.